It's the KSO Show with Derek Young and Grant Flanders. We're back for another edition. It's been a week or so since we did one, and we're excited to be back. We're talking K-State football. You know, we're in the middle of spring football. This is what's happening at K-State. It's been, you know, a nice spring football for them and about a month long of spring football. So uh, we got to talk to Klanderman and some players. When was that? Was that on Tuesday? Yes, so that was yesterday. If you're listening to this on Wednesday, it was two days ago. If you're listening to this on Thursday. Um, But anyway, that's what we're talking about today, D.Y. and I. A lot of good information from Joe Klanderman. But uh, first, I just want to say, how you doing, D.Y.? I'm good. I'm here, so I won't get fined. (laughs) Well, you're still going to get fined because you're probably going to say something that will uh, send the CDC our way or whatever. the it's the FCC. The FCC. <laughs> not the CDC. <laughs> no, no, there's no, not a health violation. I'm a, I'm a, you're the one that drops the F-bombs on here. Well, you know, I did that one time. That was fun. But, yeah, Joe Klanderman, defensive coordinator for Kansas State. You know, he sat down for the first time during spring ball to talk with us. And, you know, as usual, he's... Always a, a really good guy to talk to. Um, what is the, what is the first thing you want to bring up when it came to what Joe Kleinerman had to say? Well, I mean, I asked about the linebackers and how they felt about replacing all the snaps and experience that they were losing in, in both Elijah Sullivan and Justin Hughes. That's that's a lot of playing time to replace. How do they do? I mean, how do they fill those voids? And I thought it was interesting to hear him say that, hey, this. You know, it was surprising, and I don't know if it's hyperbole or at all, or if he's trying to raise the confidence level of this group. But he said it's probably their deepest room of the entire defense, and obviously it took me by surprise. Probably took the fans by incredible surprise because I, I think the tenor, at least from our side, the tenor of the fans is a little bit of panic when it comes to the linebacker room. I'm not. I'm not at the panic zone. Uh, I don't think that they're as thin as what people think. Also, because I think just what they're kind of going to in a defensive mindset is probably going to probably have a little bit less linebackers on the field than they already do. So, and that probably could feed into why they are as deep as mm-hmm. they believe. I mean, they have Daniel Green back, and he's played a lot of snaps. They have Cody Fletcher back, and he's played a lot of snaps. They brought in a transfer in Eric Munoz that'll probably play a decent amount of football. Mm-hmm. Wayne Jones has moved down to linebacker, and I think they have a lot of faith in what he can do, and think that's a position that probably spotlights his skill set a little bit better than the, the the places he was playing. And then beyond that, I think the depth is probably, you know, probably looking at preferred walk-ons. One that they really, really like and have for a while is Austin Moore. Even Scotty Hazleton, when he was still the defensive coordinator, had had some praise for Austin Moore and when he was even younger. He's he's a preferred walk on out of Lewisburg. He'll he'll be someone that I think sees the field in twenty twenty one. He also brought up Brian Hennington and Nick Allen. I'm not as certain that they see the field, um, especially with rotations being what they are. I don't know that they'll need to be playing eight linebackers. Mm-hmm. I think they'll be playing less than that. So I could see you know, you could squint a little bit, I think, and and notice that maybe they do have the depth is there. Maybe it's not quality depth, maybe, or maybe it's just unproven depth. Which Klanderman did point out. Yeah, he did say those yes, words too. But uh, I can squint and understand what, why he said what he did. I, I agree. I mean, like you said, a couple of guys in Daniel Green and Cody Fletcher that have a lot of experience at K State last year. They played a bunch because they rotated guys in and out all the time. And Justin Hughes, you know, always wasn't the healthiest, so they definitely needed guys in there to fill uh, fill in for him at times. So. Daniel Green and Cody Fletcher are there. Eric Munoz and Wayne Jones, you know, that'll be interesting. I think, you know, Wayne Jones can't be much worse at linebacker than he was at safety, especially knowing that he added 15 pounds of necessary weight, you know, to play that position. Um, and and Klanderman said that Wayne Jones' biggest problem is tackling in space. So if he's in the box, you know, that might be, give him a better opportunity to make tackles. Because obviously, yeah, Wayne Jones tackling was one of his biggest issues. But... Uh, another thing that got brought up, obviously, when it comes to the defense is that secondary, um, something that's obviously probably, yeah, probably the thinnest I area so. on the defense, but does have some quality pieces, too. I think, I think it's a little bit of a misconception amongst the fan base and even probably some media types right now is where Kansas State 
is probably deep and where they are thin when it comes to the defense because everyone's been panicking about the depth at linebacker. And, and it is unproven, but they have guys that are there that they feel like can do it. In the secondary, there, there, there's literally like an absence of bodies because you can't expect a true freshman to come in there, you know, and play the, the kind of snaps that's going to be required. Even T. Denson didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Even Echo Boy Doe didn't do that. I don't know that they signed, you know, they signed some high upside guys, but, I mean, they didn't sign guys that mm-hmm. can really come in and be stars in a Big 12 from day one, and, and, this, and especially at safety, too. So and what do you do at nickel? I mean, you lost Will Jones. You lost A.J. Parker. You lost, you know, before the season, Jonathan Alexander. You, you lost – Jonathan Durham to graduation the year prior. You've really been depleted at nickel and haven't really found the answer yet. The answer would probably be TJ Smith, but he also is coming off a pretty, I want to say horrible, but a, a pretty uh, a nasty knee injury. Yeah. It, he's expected to make a full recovery and be fine, but I mean, he's not 100% right now. He's not fully going through spring mm-hmm. football right now, and he's probably the answer. Um, I know Klanerman said he'd like to have T.J. Smith, J. Mack, Jerome McPherson, and Russ East on the field together. That would obviously be McPherson and East as the safeties, and T.J. Smith as the nickel. Mm-hmm. But but who are, who are their backups? In the, exactly. Because then you're you're we're talking about going back to Ross Elder again. Mm-hmm. Maybe Malachi Mitchell. Um, his name got brought up. So. I, I think, in, but a nickel, there's literally no one. And it's mm-hmm. also why Joe Klatterman said, hey, when it comes to the transfer portal, we're still in there looking for a defensive back. Yep. He he made no bones about that. At corner, probably a little bit more comfortable there. You mm-hmm. got Julius Prince, who everyone's just, you know, gushing over at this point. Echo Boy Doe, yeah. he was great a season ago. So you feel really good about the starting two. I'm guessing that's the starting two. And then Justin Gardner did, started last year, who's just, a backup now. Yeah, yeah. Justin Gardner, I, he started some games last yeah. year. Probably had a out of necessity with COVID protocols mm-hmm. and injuries and they got so thin, but he's played a lot of snaps yeah. and he's going to be your third guy. So you feel comfortable there. T Denson is a guy that's trying to be long to be the fourth guy. So you feel comfortable. Do you move one of them to nickel? You could to maybe help out the mm-hmm. nickel spot, but then you all of a sudden now you're a little thinner corner yeah. because you don't have really anyone beyond those four, but you feel good about those four. So yeah, really thin in the secondary. I would be shocked if they didn't add a defensive back in the transfer portal, another mm-hmm. one, because that is definitely more necessary than and than another linebacker. Yes, because that nickel spot, it's like you said, you, you can throw T.J. Smith in there, but he's unproven still. He's got a lot of potential, but unproven, and who knows what he's going to be like after this injury. So. Yeah, and it, and they 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 have such a lack of answers for that spot right now in the spring because mm-hmm. some guys are banged up too that they're <laughs> yeah. playing Ryan Hennington yeah. and Wayne Jones and nickel and, and they're linebackers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's a little bit of a problematic spot, and they really need to probably shore it up in the transfer portal. Absolutely. You don't want to see 15 pounds added to Wayne Jones playing the nickel. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, if he can move, great. But, yeah, no. They need to keep looking out there. But, like you said, they they hit on their transfers, at least, yeah. so far. Hopefully, they can add another. Though. Yeah, because there was three players that everyone probably took note of that mm-hmm. everyone gushed over or how they were doing right now. is Julius Brents, a transfer from Iowa, yep. playing corner. Timothy Horn. Divas a tackle transfer from Charlotte. Everyone's been yep. gushing over him too. And then Felix on a DK, which he's been in the program, high school mm-hmm. recruit out of Lee Summit. But two of the three are transfers in Horn and uh Brents. Yep. And, and it's not and it wasn't just like being, hey, how how is Julius Brents doing? How's Timothy Horn doing? It's like you ask about a certain position, people gush over those mm-hmm. guys. You ask about who's standing it out, people are gushing over guys. Yeah. You don't have to directly ask about anyone Absolutely. before they will give Total praise to both Horn and Brent. So I've, I'm expecting big things out of those two. But Clemson said they went four for four. They really like what they're getting out of Russ East at safety as well. And I'm um, forgetting all oh, Munoz. Munoz, Munoz yep. is a linebacker. So mm-hmm. they think they went four for four. I heard that a month ago. Yep. But it's interesting just through the grapevine yeah. and through inside sources. And we had that on the site. So if you like that kind of inside information, sign up. But it's good a month later. Joe Clanderman's echoing what we had heard from our sources. Absolutely. Uh, and with obviously Drew Wiley out the door, Timothy Horn's going to be a key piece in that, you know, up front. And then Julius Brents is the most exciting one because, yeah, he's gushed about every single one, not just Klanderman, but every single player, too, that was on that presser afterwards in Daniel Green. And this wasn't the um, first press conference yeah. that was that way. And even yep. before they started playing spring football, we were told mm-hmm. when they landed him, you know, this is a future NFL player. Yep. And it sounds like all those are 
being cemented. Um, we already talked about the three guys. I, I guess we could touch a little bit on Felix on DK. He's another one that everyone was just kind of clamoring mm-hmm. or, you know, gushing over as well. And I can understand that he showed tremendous upside, even in the limited time that he played, he played as a true freshman last year. Yeah. I mean, um, got on the field, not a ton, but he played, he got on the field and that's still a little bit of a rarity. I mean, they didn't throw him out there because it was out of necessity. He was mm-hmm. out there week one, yeah. right? So they really like him. The fact that maybe he's turning the corner even more this spring is probably a sign where um, it's probably not out of the question that maybe he pushes for a starting spot if he's really turning it on this much. Yeah, no, I mean, that's something that I think personally, I mean, Klanderman obviously knows more than all of us mm-hmm. when it comes to this, but I think the defensive line is probably the deepest position mm-hmm. when you're looking at that. I mean, because you have plenty of answers, and he even said that there would be a role for Nate Matlack yep. this year. So apparently, the light's mm-hmm. starting to come on for him, Spencer Trussell. So we'll see. But yeah, I mean, Anna Duque, that could be an, an interesting one. Obviously, nothing as far as schematics has been talked about yet. But if they have a three down front, then you can have Anna Duque out there, Boom Massey on the other side. I could see that being a starting lineup mm-hmm. with Timothy Horn um, in the middle or. Uh, Eli Huggins in the middle. So that'll be interesting with, obviously, Duke playing a little more of a hybrid role. Probably so. more more Jalen Pickle than Huggins, I would imagine. Yeah, Maybe. absolutely. I forgot he's about a, He's a wider well. body. Yep. yep. Pickle, um, that's another guy that we talked to yesterday. And yeah. he, he's he's probably made some progress, too. Yeah, we've heard some a few good things here and there about him. And, and he and, and the players, I think – I guess one of the bigger impressions I got from them is that they wanted to actually talk more, not necessarily about who was playing well, or who wasn't not necessarily about, you know, what happened, you know, or, or what kind of things they're doing in the spring. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of the conversation centered just on the culture and buy-in. I mean, I mean, I, Joe Klanerman even as well, the defensive coordinator, I said, you know, last year was, tumultuous i mean how how is the team responding and he, and he said you know that uh, at, this is their third year in manhattan obviously i haven't been there that long mm-hmm. but he said th- right now from a defensive standpoint it's the most buy-in they've had since they arrived in manhattan so and that, that tops the team that went eight and four yeah in the first year yep. so that's a that's a really good thing to say or a good thing to hear for us to hear you know, you hear guys like Eli Huggins and Jalen Pickle just say it just feels different right now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more guys taking what they are doing more seriously, whether that's, you know, in the classroom, off the field, nutrition, how much work, extra work they get. Even a couple of weeks ago when we, you guys talked, I wasn't on that one. When you guys talked to the offensive players, mm-hmm. you spoke to Daniel Matter Bebe, yep. a transfer that came in from Illinois that also had been at USC and also had been at Florida. And he said, out of all the stops that he has made, you know, they're – there was more players at Kansas State putting in an extra work than any other place he had been. And we kind of got that same vibe this time. Everyone's mm-hmm. saying there's so much commitment, so many guys taking everything they do seriously, whether it's taking care of their bodies before and after practice, putting in extra work in the weight room, extra work on the field. Shouts, extra shouts to Coach True. Yeah. yeah <laughs> the, the, then, yeah, a lot of yeah. praise for Coach True Carroll kind of mm-hmm. setting that standard a little bit, but I think it was already yep. probably underway before he arrived, Absolutely. but he's certainly uh, pushing it to another level too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all, I mean, that's the thing. Always the sunshine pumping when it comes to the spring. But th- I, I think regardless, we didn't have a spring last year. Yeah, so it's fun to yeah. have a sunshine period because last year we didn't have a sunshine mm-hmm. period at all. There was no sunshine to pump. It was like, you know, the world's ending. <laughs> and, I mean, we're not going to have sports. We don't know if we're going to have football. We don't know if we're going to have basketball. We had everything. They every And the football team played every single one of their games yep. that, besides the bowl game, but they were four and six anyway. Mm-hmm. The basketball team ended up playing every single one of their games yep. except Butler, I think. Was yeah, the only yeah I guess that, yeah. Good, good eye on that one because yeah, I except completely Butler. forgot about Butler. But they rescheduled the Iowa State game, but we didn't have spring football last year, so they didn't have a sunshine period. But I always say this is the sunshine period because everyone feels good about themselves. Everyone feels good about the team. Everything always feels good. I will say this kind of feels a little bit different. It feels like they really feel like – They've turned a corner inside the locker room from a work ethic standpoint, from a culture standpoint. We'll see what it, the results look like if we get immediate results mm-hmm. in a positive manner in a season or if it takes some time for it to mature. Yep. I don't know, but it, it does feel a little bit different. But you, like we said, I always preface it in the spring. No, nobody's lost a game, so everyone feels good. Yeah. I mean, that pretty much, I think, wraps us up. I We're going to have a few more weeks of spring ball, so obviously – you know, keep an eye out for more KSO shows, but more importantly, 
get on the website if you haven't been. That's where you'll get you know more inside info. You'll get all of our uh, you know articles when it comes to these press conferences. You know, going in, in depth uh, with words that you actually have to read if you want to do that. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's just a good time. And then the message board, obviously, is where info, uh, you know, BSing with other fans and everything goes on. So it's a lot of fun. Um, if you want to join up on the website, you can also, you know, subscribe to the, the YouTube. That one's free. Hit the subscription. You know, subscribe. If you're listening to this on YouTube, hit the subscribe right now. Helps us out for sure. It's free to do. Um, but, yeah, that pretty much wraps us up for the KSO Show. That was Derek Young. I'm Grant Flanders. We'll be back next time. Tell your friends. Tell them.